entire premise of Doctor Who is that the Doctor can go anywhere at any time with the help of their magical flying cuboid, also known as the TARDIS, but let's be honest, it's much better to say magical flying cuboid. The show has such a vast cultural reach that its various heroes and villains sometimes appear in other shows, often played by the original actors to boot. I'm Ellie for Who Culture and this is 10 Doctor Who characters who appeared outside the show. Number 10, the Daleks in Big Fat Quiz of the Year. The Big Fat Quiz of the Year has been a staple of British TV ever since the first one back in 2004. The idea of the show is that a group of comedians get together in December to answer questions about the year that was. Sometimes they answer them correctly, but most of the time they come up with silly answers to make people laugh. It's a simple formula, but one that usually works. In 2015, there was a special anniversary edition of the quiz, which is hosted by British comedian Jimmy Carr. A staple of the programme is guest question askers, and on this occasion, that honour went to one of the universe's biggest villains. Carr introduced a Dalek to ask the show's final question, which was about best-selling media. This Dalek was of the iconic bronze design, which had been their main design since Doctor Who returned in 2005. Let's just forget about that whole Teletubby Daleks thing as well, you know? We just gone out of my mind. Interestingly, one team partaking in the quiz included Jonathan Ross, who's a big Doctor Who fan, and also Warwick Davis, who played Porridge in Nightmare in Silver. Number 9. The Fourth Doctor in The Simpsons Considering how long both shows have been on TV, it's not a massive surprise that Doctor Who and The Simpsons have crossed paths a few times over the years. In a sequence poking fun at British culture from the episode Love is a Many Splintered Thing, the TARDIS materialises in the middle of the Houses of Parliament. Out steps Alfred Hitchcock, who proceeds to breakdance while Mott the Hoople's All the Young Dudes play in the background. Yep. That actually happened. The Time Lord, who has appeared most often in the realm of Springfield, is easily number four, who has turned up a bunch of times over the years. In the episode Sideshow Bob's Last Gleaming, the fourth Doctor is one of the esteemed representatives of television, convened after Bob threatens to destroy the medium. He then appears in a Treehouse of Horror segment, having been captured by the sci-fi obsessed villain The Collector, who is actually comic book guy. He can also be seen signing autographs at a convention in the episode Mared to the mob. Hopefully Tom Baker got some residuals for all of the uses of his image, but something tells me he probably didn't. Number 8. The Twelfth Doctor in Newsoids When it was announced that Peter Capaldi would be taking on the role of the Twelfth Doctor, there was some concern that his previous roles would affect how viewers saw him. One part in particular was singled out as being very undoctory, Capaldi's turn as swearaholic political spinmaster Malcolm Tucker in the thick of it. Tucker was conniving, underhanded, and just about the rudest person in television history. Basically, he was everything the good-hearted time traveller should never be. While Doctor Who itself never brought attention to Capaldi's past life as an icon of post-Watership, television, another show did. Newsoids was a satirical sketch show that ran from 2015 to 2016, and depicted various celebrities as animated puppets. Capaldi's 12th Doctor likeness was used across the series, with a healthy serving of Malcolm Tucker's foul language thrown in for good measure. One highlight was a sketch where the 12th Doctor met the 12th Doctor. Both then travel back in time to when Doctor Who was, quote, much simpler and cheaper. Q, a Dalek made of a bin, a whisk, and a plunger. Though Capaldi doesn't voice himself in Newsoids, the heightened riff on his famous Scottish tones work well for a ridiculous comedy show about talking puppets. Number 7. The Eleventh Doctor in Call the Midwife Can I just say, I absolutely love this particular sketch. I've seen it so many times. Since the 1980s, Comic Relief has hosted several telethons designed to raise money for good causes, usually by forcing celebrities to participate in criminally unfunny sketches and skits they are severely underqualified for. Now, a classic Comic Relief trait is to mash up popular TV shows. And in 2013, the show One Born Every Minute crossed over with Call the Midwife a drama about a maternity unit in post-war Britain, which is brilliant, by the way, and also, fun fact, stars Paul McGann's brother, Stephen McGann. After the old-timey nurses make a complete hash of delivering the child, the partner of the pregnant woman says he, quote, wants a doctor and presses a button on the wall. Uh, You can see where this is going, right? Cue the TARDIS materialising in the room. Matt Smith's 11th doctor sticks his head out, introduces himself, and then claims the woman's kids will become a monster known as Jedward. 
Oh God, Doctor, save us! Who cares if it's a fixed point? It's hardly the greatest sketch in the world, but you can't judge something too harshly when it's for charity. And it's always good to see the 11th Doctor, even if he is clearly stood in front of a green screen. Also, fun fact for you, as someone who does watch Call the Midwife, the lovable character Sister Monica Joan is a very big fan of Doctor Who and has been seen on numerous occasions getting very excited about watching it on her brand new television. Number 6. K9 in American Dad Who'd have thought that of all the characters in a show about all of time and space, one of the most enduring would be a little robot dog? K-9 was part of the fourth Doctor's entourage and travelled alongside his master in several classic adventures. He returned to the show alongside Sarah Jane Smith in 2006 and played a key role in her spin-off, The Sarah Jane Adventures. In between keeping the universe safe and fetching Sarah Jane the morning paper, K-9 has also found time to appear in an American animated sitcom. In the episode of American Dad called Haley Was a Girl Scout, Stan gets involved with a troop of the titular cookie sellers, and they build a robot to enter the National Robotics Convention. The contest is modelled after a dog trial, so of course it features a cameo from the goodest boy in the whole galaxy. K9's ultra brief appearance in this episode betrays creator Seth MacFarlane's deep seated nerdiness. This is the guy who made his own Star Trek spoof. Of course, he was going to cram a Doctor Who reference into one of his shows. Number 5 The Sixth Doctor in Roland Rat. Brits who grew up in the 1980s will probably remember Roland Rat, a puppet who appeared across several strands of media throughout the decade. He appeared in numerous TV shows on multiple different networks, including the BBC, he had his own video game, and he released a bunch of singles, one of which made it to number 14 in the UK charts. Roland Rat the series was a show hosted by the hand-operated Rodent, which featured several famous faces as guest stars. Serving as the continuity announcer for this programme on one occasion in 1986, was Colin Baker, in full costume as the Sixth Doctor. Well, I didn't see that coming. The Doctor begins by claiming that of all the creatures in the universe, Roland is by far the slimiest. He doesn't seem happy at all to be working for a grime-dwelling beast, which is entirely fair, let's be honest. After the episode ends, Baker, who has fallen asleep, introduces the next show on the schedule, which just so happens to be Doctor Who. Reggie Rat pops up and calls the show rubbish, which Baker responds to by trying to shoot him with a laser. It's utter madness, honestly. Number 4. The Daleks in 2D TV As the most recognisable baddies in the whole Hooniverse, and across television in general, the Daleks have either appeared in or been parodied in dozens of TV shows and movies since they debuted in 1963. They can be found in the background of Futurama, as a toy in Rugrats, and in various forms in the show Queer as Folk, which may or may not have been written by Russell T Davis. They can also be found in 2D TV, a British animated sketch show that ran for five series between 2001 and 2004. It specialised in sending Ending up UK pop culture, so it only made sense that Doctor Who got a mention. In a segment called Galaxy Idol, a spoof of American slash pop idol, a panel of judges, including the fourth Doctor, see, there he is again, give their thoughts on the singing abilities of a group of aliens. A Dalek gives its best rendition of Halfway Up the Stairs before getting dissed by Simon Cowell. In the same series, Scarrow's finest have another run in with some reality stars when their fashion choices get critiqued by Trini and Susanna. Interestingly, Trini and Susanna later appeared in robot form in the Doctor Who episode Bad Wolf. Maybe Russell T Davis got the ideas from watching 2D TV. Who knows? Number 3. The Tenth Doctor in Extras Following the success of The Office, the UK version, not the US one, Ricky Gervais and Steven Merchant's next big project was Extras, a show about a jobbing actor who just can't get that lucky break. Main character Andy Millman gets work on a number of different shows and runs into his fair share of famous faces along the way. In the Extras Christmas special, which also served as its finale, he lands the role of a lifetime, a giant slug called Schlong in an episode of Doctor Who. After angrily telling his agent he'll never play an alien on Doctor Who, that's exactly what ends up happening. Though this particular episode may be fictional, one thing that is real is David Tennant, who appears in character as the Tenth Doctor. The Time Lord is able to defeat his slimy opponent by throwing a handful of salt over him, which Andy sells with all the enthusiasm of a guy reflecting on what life choices led him to this moment. Ricky Gervais has never appeared in Doctor Who in the real world. Maybe this experience scarred him for life. Number 2. The Fourth Doctor in Disney Time 
The early days of British TV weren't anything to shout home about, so imagine the excitement felt by kids up and down the land when Disney Time launched in 1961. It was a compilation show that broadcast edited clips from Disney movies free on television, which was a revelation at the time. The programme proved so popular that it ran in some form or another until 1998 and attracted some big guest stars along the way. Various celebrities were brought in to provide links between the clips, and they didn't always have something to do with the House of Mouse. TV presenter Noel Edmonds got the gig, as did Philip Schofield. And on the August bank holiday in 1975, Tom Baker also appeared on the show in character as the Fourth Doctor. Landing in his TARDIS, Baker, who had only just begun his stint as the Fourth Doctor, chatted in between excerpts from Clock Cleaners, Bed Knobs and Broomsticks, and The Jungle Book, among others. Neatly, this appearance tied into the next episode of Doctor Who, with the Doctor receiving a note from the Brigadier requesting some aid against the Zygons. Now that's how you do cross-promotion. Number 1. The Cybermen in Top Gear Much like Doctor Who, Top Gear was a long-running BBC show that was given a new lease of life when it was revamped in the early 21st century. Although nobody's been fired from Doctor Who for punching a producer. Yet. In one of its first series, Back from the Grave, the motoring show held a gimmicky race to determine who was the master of the universe. The segment consisted of several famous sci-fi characters doing laps in a car to see who could do it the fastest, with Darth Vader, Ming the Merciless and a Klingon all getting some screen time. And Doctor Who was very well represented as well. A Cyberman and a Dalek are in the initial lineup, but the Mondasian killing machine's lap gets interrupted when the TARDIS materialises in the middle of the track. And it's only blooming Colin Baker at the controls, appearing on TV as the sixth Doctor almost 20 years after he was first cast. Unfortunately, when the Dalek gets a go, it can't fit into the car. It handles this situation by exterminating all the contestants. Flippin' hell, talk about sore loser. This segment has been cut from the version of the episode on BBC iPlayer, presumably due to rights issues. Or maybe the Daleks exterminated it out of shame. One of the two. And that concludes our list, but for some more subtle Doctor Who easter eggs and references in other TV shows, then check out our video covering just that. In the meantime, I've been Ellie for Who Culture, and in the words of River Song herself, goodbye, sweeties.